What are the most critical shots a snooker player needs to know to improve their break building and to simply increase the percentage of frames they're able to win? This is Break From Life. Welcome back and if it's your first time watching one of our videos then it's fantastic to have you here. What's one of the biggest differences between snooker and any type of pool? Well, one of the major differences is after the break in pool, one part of the table is much the same as any other. Pool players try and use common patterns to make it more straightforward to be able to pot consecutive balls. In snooker, on the other hand, all the colours are re-spotted, meaning that you more regularly have shots that aren't necessarily the same as before, but seem a lot more familiar. Also in snooker, if you leave the cue ball at a specific end of the table, it's a lot less likely that your opponent is going to be able to pot a ball. But how can this help you? Well, this all means that not only are some shots in snooker more important than others, but there's more value in learning these shots specifically. So here are my 10 snooker shots that any serious snooker player must know. Shot 1. A half ball black off the black spot. Being able to successfully pot the black off its spot consistently is absolutely crucial if you want to have any success in the game of snooker. You need to not only be proficient at potting these half ball blacks, but also be confident in potting the black from anywhere in between. So what exactly do we mean by a half ball shot? Well this is a full ball shot. In order to pot the black we're going to have to get the cue ball roughly here. And we can do this by lining the cue ball up in the centre and moving our tip directly towards our target, the centre of the black. A half ball black is slightly different, but the principle is still the same. Like a full ball black, it's a very specific angle. From our perspective, half of the cue ball is striking the black and half isn't. So if we play the centre of the cue ball to the edge of the black, then we're guaranteed to pot it so long as we have correctly recognised the angle. So what can you do to guarantee you play this valuable shot at a high level? We'll try very simply playing consecutive blacks off the black spot. This will very quickly teach you what sort of angles are desirable and what angles aren't. Get near to doubling the amount of blacks you can pot in a row and you'll find this will dramatically improve your game. So what exactly is shot two all about? This is all about playing a really basic safety shot that can greatly benefit your game. Being able to leave the cue ball safe at the top end of the table is sometimes a simple but a vital shot to be able to play well. And a lot of the time it can be a lot better than risking playing a difficult safety shot. But when can this shot actually be played? You can play this sort of shot so long as there isn't a potable red along the top cushion or in and around one of the pockets. And just make sure if you're going to play this shot that you're not leaving anything too gettable into one of the middle pockets. Of course, one of the massive advantages of this shot is it allows you to pot a ball at the same time. And if you can combine this with shot one, this will really benefit your game. Of course, if you miss the red, it's highly likely you're going to be leaving your opponent a very easy safety shot only they're going to be leaving you the same chance over and over again. And so long as you don't make a mistake, it's only you that's going to be going for pots. So there's only really one player who has a chance to score any points. Shot 3 is a mid-range stun shot. Of course, to be able to consistently take advantage of these sort of shots, you need to have relatively good queuing. But to be able to stop most shots dead can be highly valuable, because quite often the object ball is very close to being exactly where you need the white to be for the next shot. So what do you need to be able to do to be moderately consistent at these slightly challenging shots? Well, to start off with, make sure you line them up right. Well, it may seem obvious, but sometimes the distances can play tricks on you. After you've done this, you need to make sure you're walking in on the line of the shot, and as far as you can tell, you're queuing up to the centre of the white. Just make sure when you play it, you try to take as much pace out of the shot as possible. The slower you can play it and still get a stun shot, the more likely it is the shot will go well. Shot 4 is fairly basic, but tricky thin cuts. These are actually quite straightforward shots, but remember earlier we were talking about half ball pots? and a lot of players find it very difficult to play shots thinner than half ball 
confidently. But don't worry, because there's two things that you can do about this. To start off with, remember you don't have to cut the ball necessarily into the middle of the pocket. So if it makes you feel more confident to play the ball into the thick side of the pocket, then do it. The second thing you can do is learn a way of lining shots up thinner than half ball. Instead of lining shots up with your tip on these sorts of shots, use this edge of the white. This should give you a lot better understanding of where the shot's going, so you're a lot less likely to miss it thick through fear of missing the ball altogether. And of course you can use this on any thin shot, giving you a lot larger range of balls you can pop. This will simply make it feel like you're in position a lot more often. Shot 5 is keeping the object ball safe with a cross double. The point of this shot is to play the cue ball safe back down that end of the table whilst playing the object ball normally off two cushions and back halfway across the table perfectly safe. This is a basic way to play safe at any stage of the game but when you get to the stage where there's a single object ball left you really need to be concentrating on keeping it safe. Sometimes you may even be in the correct position to play the double into the corner pocket. It all depends on what sort of an angle you have because if you have the wrong angle then the cross double is the wrong shot to play and all you'll end up doing is playing the object ball over a pocket. Shot 6 is fairly simple, but it's a shot you really need to be able to play accurately. You see, what's the difference between leaving the cue ball here... ...and leaving the cue ball here? It's a very small difference, but it makes the black a lot more straightforward. So what do you need to do to be able to play a controlled run shot? We'll line up a straight red and these colours as shown alongside it. All you need then is dice. And this is what you do. So we just simply give it a roll. Six. So that corresponds to the pink. So we simply pop the red and roll through next to the pink. Just like that. It's important when you're playing these shots to always play them confidently. If you're worried about hitting it too hard or hitting it too soft, you rarely finish in the right position. And of course, once you've done one, we've got two this time, so that's the yellow. You try rolling at the pace to get next to the yellow. And we've massively overhit it. But that's okay, because we can try again. When we're talking about controlling run-through shots, we're talking about one of the most fundamental areas of snooker, touch play. Generally, touch play makes a bigger difference in frames than any other area of your game, because players with better touch simply score more points. Never overestimate the value of remaining in good position consistently, and having good control over your run-through shots is a very simple way of being able to do this. Shot 7. So can you always be in good position? No matter how much you try, you can't always remain in exact position. And that's why it's vital to be able to play one of the most common recovery shots in the game. The long blue always seems really tricky, especially because it's one of those shots they always seem to be pulling out on TV. But just by simply practicing it a few times will allow you to start thinking about it a lot more positively. Just don't practice straight blues too often on the same table, otherwise you'll end up with lines on your table, similar to what I had before I had the cloth chain. Shot 8 is again keeping the object ball safe by doubling it this time up and down the table. This shot isn't straightforward and it probably loses more games than it actually wins, but it's really crucial you know exactly how to play it because sometimes there really is no other shot on. And of course, this is another shot you can only ever get right with practice. So how can you practice getting this vital part of the game right? Well, to start off with, you can give this a try. Start by placing the black on the black spot, the cue ball in the D, and very simply try to leave the cue ball and the black on opposite sides of the bulk line. This may seem simple, but it really isn't, and this is the sort of exercise that will get you used to playing all sorts of vital safety shots. Because again, knowing when you have the right angle to play one of these shots, and knowing when you don't, could be the difference between you winning frames and losing them. 
Shot 9 is the break off. This is a shot you need to be able to get right almost every time. This is a shot you can play from either side of the table, but you need to be able to hit the reds at precisely the right angle with the right amount of side spin. And I explain exactly how to do this in our video Snooker Side Spin Basic How To. It's in the card right now and on the Break From Life channel page along with a load of other videos to help you dominate at the game and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel. Shot 10. Do you know how to play a basic screw shot? Well, in case you don't, here's our basic guide. To start off with, obviously, you need to strike through the bottom of the ball, but ideally you don't want to be striking down on it like this. Instead, you want to lower your bridge hand. This will allow you to play the shot with more of a level cue, but don't worry too much about getting completely flat to the cushion. Striking down at this shallower angle will have almost no negative consequences. And when you go to queue up to the cue ball, striking it in the center rather than to one side will help you generate more spin. But what really generates backspin on these shots is to hit this ball nice and crisply and get all the way through the ball. The follow through on these shots is absolutely critical. That's why it's best to practice them slightly off straight so your cue won't get in the way. So if you want to know how to really draw the ball back, try our video how to play a screw back shot in snooker. Or if you want more tips on snooker, then try our video, Snooker Tips. And remember, don't just watch, play. And make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel. See you later.